be a banger and we take a look at the other matchups that we do have live as well across the four different streams a b c and d we've got fanatic taking on nip vitality versus the heretics dignitas versus complexity and ents versus astralis so pretty incredible matchups across the board but it's time to get into this one astralis taking on ents astralis is going to be on that ct side they're going to have plenty of utility glaive and zipex going with Smokes, Flashes, and Nids, the rest of Kevlar. And over on Ents, it's X7 who goes for the utility alongside Sunny, the rest of Kevlar over there. A little surprised they don't have a kid on the side of Astralis, but I'm um, sure they do have an idea as to where the hit might be coming towards. All five players slowly inching toward the Brown Hawks. They spot a device. They will be forced on back. Flashback to put a player towards Pop Dog, but the nades in the hand of Zipix is could do a lot of problems, could create a lot of problems here, and they could get a chunk taken out of Ents. Utility being tossed into his lower side, it's going to be smoked down, flash up as well, Sunny's going to be charging forward, <sighs> but the nade is going to land and do so much damage onto the end players. Now, kills do come in though. Ariel and Sunny. Alu holding off the flank and Astralis have just been dispatched with. Magic and Glaive left into a 2v5. This is not going to be a recovery from Astralis and will be picking up the pistol. Oh, that's a very convincing play coming out from uh, from Ents. I'm a little surprised how Zipix was not aware or was not expecting any player to walk out from the lower slope even though there was a smoke there. Sergei, scroll jump coming into play but he will survive. Look at how low Four of the players where Ents are. But no kills going the way of Astralis. Majisk will try to hold on to that Kevlar of his. He's gonna head all the way towards Ivy. Where Ariel already ready. He spots him out. But I don't think they're really gonna be going for the hunt here. X7, he's got the nade. But it's too far away to get anything done. And Majisk will survive. But they don't get a single kill in Ents with a flawless pistol round. That was very well played. Yeah, really well played indeed. They took a lot of damage early from Astralis, but... In the end, not really too many issues for them. Now we move into this one. Ents are going to be picking up the AKs. The Galil and play on X7. And another AK picked up for Ariel. Over on Astralis, it'll be the Forest Spy. The Scout's coming through on Magisk and Device. 5-7s, Deagle and play for Sipex. A little bit of utility across the board, but this round really should be going in favor of Ents. Ali's going to catch off Glaive in towards Pop Dog early on. So, man advantage picked up for Ents early. Two players positioned over towards the B bomb site for Astralis. You've got Zipex close by with the 5 7. And Matt's just kind of rotating in between A and B at the moment. So, they have just left Zipex here on his own. It's going to be quite difficult to hold on. They're going to walk out upper. It's down to the timing whether or not Zipex will actually see them coming this way. The Deagle's at the ready. Ali's going to be the front man. He's going to spot a little bit of damage and tag him up, but falls away. Magisk coming in from the connector. The rotation is quick, and there's another oh. chance for him. Good damage being done. Magisk with a double, and now a real chance for a little bit more here. Ents need to be careful that they don't let this one slide. Sergei, very lucky to stay alive there. He gets the kill, but he's still stuck. On the bomb, another attack comes in, this is ludicrous, the scout's doing all the work, three kills already, but now the 2v2, Majisk chimes in with another one of his own, 3k for him with the USB this time around, smoke on the bomb, he's just gonna go for the stick, he doesn't have a kit though, and Device needs to hold the line, needs to prevent the final remaining T from preventing his defuse from taking place, Nate seals in, Majisk 5 and 5 HP, pistol sticking this, and he's gonna win the round, how have they done this? Well, coming through it. Ludicrous. The, yeah, absolutely ludicrous. Astralis is going to walk away with it. Magis coming in. A big play from him. Shots coming through. Three kills. And the round just peeks into the open with a scout. Rotates in at the right time. And just shuts them down with a scout. So one to one. Ants are going to be on to the Galil 4x7. Take a look at what the rest have. It's uh, not much at all. So that's, uh, I thought when we hit the European division blow, we, after, you know, casting a lot of mental CIS counter strike all morning, that we wouldn't have these issues. But we move into this and Astralis immediately coming in with a force by win. Yeah, you give you give a little bit of uh, of an opportunity to the players of the caliber we have on Astralis. They're going to, you give an inch, you're going to take a mile. And the just, what a round from him with a scout nonetheless. Not exactly clear you'd be expecting to be. Not as solid would be a scope rifles, but a fast play towards Zinno. It's already looking pretty rough here for Astralis. They do have a superior weaponry, Alu, which is with a Deagle. Gonna be swapping out. Sunny picks up the Deagle, because he was low, 47 HP. Alu with the M4 and the Kevlar, and the Nate sails in. Somehow he stays alive with 11 HP. 
Mark 7 coming back in from upper. Astralis looking for the way back in. It's going to be Glyph with the headshot. And there it is. Oh. Just like that. So clean. The three kills come in quickly. Glyph, Dupree, and Magisk almost in tandem. Find them all. And it's going to be Astralis 2 to 1 up. Finding two rounds in a row now. And do get the bomb plant. So the money is looking flush here on the T side. They're going to have plenty of it. Not enough for the AWP though, unless they want to go for it. Uh, a hit on the utility or a glass cannon. Well, I like that. <laughs> Ariel's gone for the, the taking utility. He's going to take the hit by the AWP for Alu. It's going to be tossed on over. So, sacrifices the utility to get the AWP into the hands of Alu. And I think on a map like Train, this is where Alu does a lot of his work. So, I think it's a, a good place to, to give the AWP on over. I think it's, wor it's a worthy sacrifice. Oh, indeed it is. Uh, this is a map as well in T side, especially where we've seen so many highlights. And so many really, really powerful rounds coming out from uh, from Alu. But this time around, he's been dumped down to 22 HP very early on. X7 alongside Sunny, making the presence felt towards Ivy. Nate's going to be tossed in. Counter Nate from Magisk, which is in fact going to do a bit of damage. Just just wrapping up a few bullets. As a Sergei, this, this could be very fast hit towards uh, towards B. Sergei trying to bait out something. But nothing will be baited out. Zipix just holding the line. He's got a Molotov, then send you in his hand. And then we're playing this very passively. Might be another retake setup being done here by Astralis towards the B bomb site. If ends do make the way there, but by the looks of the setup right now, it does look like a pincer play with the A. That A yard. Have two towards Ivy. I have one player that is Sergey waiting on top of Pop Dog. Two CDs waiting for him right underneath them. Ariel's gonna catch. Oh, the flank on Magic Whoa. was relatively close. Ariel taking a lot of damage on board. He's dropped to 11 HP. Now with 35 seconds left in play. Two players emerging from Ivy for Ents. And well, Sergey looking to try and get the damage done towards Glyph. He's gonna drop. Nice headshot. Oh. Just wrecking Glyph in towards Pop Dog. And now moving forward for another. What a play okay. from Sergey. Three picked up from the young Finn. And he'll be looking for four. And it's no exactly way. what he'll get. Zip picks picked off. Four picked up for him. And it's two to two. Ents even it up. And that's a huge play from Sergey. How has he done that? That is just brilliant. He gets one, which is an instant headshot the moment he drops down. A second kill. Great third kill. And finally closing it out. This immense play from the youngster. And that's a that's a good rebound from Ents, despite losing the uh, losing two rounds back to back, losing to that force buy from Astralis. They indeed do bounce back. And now Astralis on the back foot when it comes to economy. They've gone for the force buy nonetheless. Magisk with the AWP. Interesting decision. But considering how he's been looking. With a snipe with a sniper so far, why not? He's been hitting almost everything. Alone towards Ivy. But four players waiting. And the flick comes in from a He takes a bit of damage, but he does get a dink and Alu in the meantime finds Dupree. Quick switch up comes in. Sunny tagged down at 22 HP. Will now be wielding the Mac 10. Flash goes up in towards the A bomb site. Astralis just holding the four players over here, but Ents can just slow the pace completely. They've done so much damage early into round number five. Dupree out early on. Magic's dropped to 23 HP. Ents in control at the moment. Should be the perfect round for them to pick up. Really put them in the driver's seat at the start here on the T side. Oh, X7 walks around the corner, does damage to his own teammate, but finds device, and that's the most important factor of that engagement. And now Glaive charging on in, looking to try and get involved with the Deagle. They're going to run through it. It's one for him, a second coming no. through. That's huge from Glaive. Zipex holds off Sunny as well, and it's all fallen to pieces for Ents. A 2v2 with 30 seconds in play. He's still recoverable with Sergei alive on the server. He's going to be making his way forward with Alu. But with 20 seconds left, they've got to go into the lion's den just to grab the bomb. And while Alu patiently waits for that peek from Zipex, now it's Cliff looking to do it all. Oh! And there it is. The 4K from Cliff. He saves the day and a huge round from him. Massive play. I love how proactive he was there. The moment they lost Ivy control, there were three players there. Smokes off the entrance. One of the T's pushes in, but doesn't matter. Zipex finds him and Cliff with the Deagle up close. The body shots are working out. What a play from Glaive, 4k. And what was a very, very iffy buy for Astralis, it works out their way. Money still not that great though for the Danish side. Two MP9s, the AWP for Device, Scout in the hands of Zipix, and Glaive for the solitary M4. And for Ents as well, pretty similar tale. Just to one smoke and two flashes, two Galil, two AKs, and the Deagle and Device. 
He's trapped for the time being, but he gets the opening pick as a scout from Zipix. Gets a tag, Nate sails in, does a little bit more damage, Alu lucky to stay alive in 20 HP, and Zipix will make his escape, but Dupree from behind, what an absolute madman, finds both the kills, sprays him down, picks up an AK, and that's a round done and dusted. My word, that's insane from Dupree, the timing on that. Yeah, it's been working well for his shots, I think most <laughs> individuals now showing up, and uh, a flash in the pan from Sergei, but other than that... It's been a little bit quiet now. And the Strauss are going to go 4 to 2 up on the scoreboard. It's all five players staying alive as well. This is the prime time for them to build that economy on the CT side. They always talk about how difficult it is to get the money going on that CT side. Well, the Strauss have the prime opportunity now with Entz looking down the barrel of an eco in round number seven. Strauss should be up 5 to 2. And that, then we can see the money get back in for Entz. Then we can see the buy. So I got to point out as well, Dupree going up towards, uh, going up the pop the ladder wasn't just just a gamble. They had an inkling because of the information gleaned towards Ivy that there were two players towards Ivy, or or they might have fallen back, but there was not enough time for them to make their way towards the towards the bathrooms area. So it was a very calculated uh, gamble for him to push up there. He knew most likely there was no one spotting there, and with the Mac 10 from behind, two free kills for the man, beautifully played by Dupree and Astralis. Now. Just the Glocks remaining on that, Ariel and Sergei, so like you mentioned, Dinko, it's going to be 5-2. to two. Astral is looking very, very good indeed, despite a uh, pretty back-and-forth early beginning to this, uh, to this game. Yeah, there's definitely, uh, initially a back-and-forth, but I think Astral has started to really grab it by the horns now, and we'll see if that is going to be the case as we move into this next round. And it's coming back over the buy, it's certainly going to be limited in terms of what they can bring to it. So it's going to be the AKs picked up, utility is there, um, but it's not going to be heaps of it. They're certainly going to be lacking Molotovs, and that can definitely be an issue. Alu keeping a little bit of extra cash, wanting to get that orb. He hasn't actually bought any armor, there we go. Definitely was expecting that to come through, but now he's got the flash buy. So, Ents, it's not the best of buys, low utility level. It is uh, certainly enough to make something happen. Sergei's going to catch Zipex, and there's a few times now where Sergei's just been so successful towards the top of Pop Dog, just taking that initial kill. He has, but that gun being picked up by Dupree could be a tell. They should have heard out of the fact that uh, there must be someone else with Pop Dog, and I like this from Ents not uh, being too over eager to get the opening pick. Not as slowly inching ahead. Sergei going to be leading the charge because he's a low player. Device getting the kill, but now at least they have the information as to where one of the AWPs is. The dual op setup, mind you, Magisk and Device. 4v4 now. Utility, ah, uh, very lacking for ends. They just have the one. Okay, they have picked up another smoke from the uh, the corpse of Sergei's. Okay, seven. Okay, that is brilliant. Finds Dupree, fades him out, and now. The inner bomb side, just one player holding the line. It is Glaive once more. Well, Glaive, oh, he's being spammed through the smoke, and there it is from X7. That's two big kills from in the round. And Astralis, well, save call, happy to come in. Not retaking really the B bomb site with the double up setup here. So we're going to be taking that into the next round. And at least uh, they are carrying something over. And this is not full wipeout. But hence, that's a perfect answer for them. They needed a round. Two win. kills. Yeah, two kills for X7 without seeing anyone. That's uh. <laughs> doesn't happen all the you time. You like to see that. Yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. You you like to see that if you're if you're an Ents fan or, or if you're Ents. But uh, like you mentioned, Restral saving the two ops are going to be massive because the money's still very good. The money's still very very good for the remaining players. You you have five thousand on Glaive and Zepex. You have the Dupree just on six thousand dollars and Magisk in four K as well. And bear in mind, it's still going to get the uh, the lost bonus. Uh, they're gonna be sitting pretty on, yeah, there we go. An average of about 7,000 dollars in three players, but just on 5,700, so buying up is not gonna be a problem at all for Astralis. Still, uh, still early days in this uh, map number one. Train, the pick from Ents, followed by Nuke, the pick from Astralis, and if it goes down to it, let me quickly check here for you guys. Inferno, a classic decider. If it does come down to Inferno. We'll find out later on. Right now, though, it's still very even, Stevens. Astralis 5, ends on 3, and still want more. You're not going to be just comfortable just winning 3 rounds in a T-side. You want to get more. You want to have like 5 or 6. Give yourself a little bit of extra buffer to work with. And you then switch over to the CT side. Three players from Ents working Ivy. 
This is the goal of the round at the moment. Nate going up in towards the brown holes from Glaive. A little bit further back, so that it's inconsequential. It's a slow default from Eds, just initially sending those three players towards Ivy, but now they've just left one over that in the form of Sunny, where the rest pull themselves off. But Dupree has got himself in towards T-Con, so that's an area of the map Eds have lost, and they need to be aware of its possibility. They need to do, and they have. I have found quite a bit of success with Zena Bombsite, Dinko. Can't really fault them for really opting for it time and time again. And bear in mind, Astralis, they like going for these retake setups towards uh, B, and it doesn't... It's worked out so far for them wonderfully, but it's not always going to be the case, especially with two ops. It's never too ideal. And Zipex. And Device. They have expended a lot of the utility towards Zena. Zipex still has an incendiary in the nade to work with, but apart from the device, just with the AWP, he's gonna try and go for this duel. Sunny trying to sell something towards Ivy, but the device spots him out. He knows it's all a ruse towards Ivy. Op trained in, blocks the aerial in mid-air. Zipex gonna fry him out a lot, and except it's gonna fall. The device is rattling off shots, misses the second one though. He's still looking for more, so he's gonna find Sergey. He's just not stopping, and he finishes it off. Beautiful 2k there from uh, device. They lose two players, but they're still gonna be very happy with that. Well, tactical timeout having to come in from Ents. First of the game so far. Take a look at what they've got. It's going to be Alu on the AK immediately. It's going to be a pretty scrappy buy across the board, no matter what they decide to purchase up. Stral is certainly in control at the moment in terms of the, the money side of things. This double up setup is proving to be quite potent. I just gone seven kills, three deaths. Device eight and four. Everyone on Australia is kind of hitting their mark. Everybody's hitting the quota. And that's exactly what you want to see out of the system. But here comes the buy. Ants coming through. It's going to be the AKs. Sadly, just a deagle here in the hands of uh, X7. But, you know, we've, we've seen what he can do. You know, he doesn't even have to see opponents play. He can get involved without having too much uh, going his way. So he's got extra utility. Being a supportive element of the team. The rest on AK 47s and Ants hot on the heels of the B hit. It's going to be Sergei, the front man. Players in behind him. Ants can resume to play a little slower. Australia is choosing some utility early on. And they've been very proactive in taking this control towards T-Con. Device and Dupree have been working together, getting him in there, and Dupree is just locking down that area. Oh, yeah, indeed. And that's huge, right? Just keeping Dupree there, it does so much of the map in the hands. Of the CTs, you can keep you can keep Dupree there. He's got eyes not just over towards Tcon, but also has eyes towards uh, Pop Dog. If anyone uh, heads on out, and now you keep one more player towards Ivy, which is going to be Glaive. He, however, gets caught out there. That is big. That's a big opening find from Sunny. Return nades being tossed in by the Ts. Sorry, by the CTs, but not really finding much. In the meantime, the inner bomb site has been completely compromised. Zepex is aware of it. He's going to spawn them out. The smoke goes a full spray. Okay, Zepex. All right then. Two kills oh. for him. Matt just catches Sunny trying to cross on over, and just like that, it looked like a round that Ents might win. Bomb down 5v4, and it's been turned right on its head. So he has, and well, Ariel's been spotted as well. Matt's just taking him down. It's on X7, trying to get involved. And it's probably not going to be too uh, too fruitful here. This flank from the connector. He's been spotted. Device turns around, catches X7. Well, 7 to 3. Estrella is really starting to steamroll now. Getting the momentum going on the CT side. Ents have been struggling in most of the rounds economically. And I think at this point, you've just got to take the hit. Go for the pistols. Maybe just a little bit of Kevlar flash here and there picked up. But for the most part, you want to save as much cash. Stay around 2k. Get the money into the next round and get this buy in because they just need everything to work with. This sort of. In limbo, AKs, couple of deagles, it just isn't going to work. So, you've got to get as much as you can to go your way. Astralis are going to be taking eight rounds most likely here on the board. And if you are just tuning in, this is Ens' map pick. So, Astralis, off to a pretty hot start. It's going to be Ariel just diving through TCON this time, being a little bit more assertive. And he does take down Dupree, but then it comes in and the bomb will hit the deck. Ooh, that's nice. That's tasty. Tasty. 
Sunny does get a trade, but uh, yeah, I don't really see this really spiraling out of control. Sunny. Flashbang gonna be popping up high. But device. Look at device. Look at how confident he is right now. That's gonna be easy. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. It, it does a little bit there. prolonged, yeah, but he, he gets it done. Uh, it three, Astralis. Already confirming themselves at least around the league going into the second half. But here it is. Ensa's time to shine. AWP back into the hands of Alu. Rifles across the board. Utility in the back pockets. This has to be a showing from Ents. They can't afford to lie down and die again. Astralis will just have too many rounds in the board. They'll just be steamrolling and continuing with no signs of stopping. The Finns have to show up in this round. They do indeed. And a very quick update for you guys. Fnatic and Nip right now. 72 in favor of Fnatic. Vitality and Heretics, that's a 6-3 to Heretics. And of course, we have Dignitas versus Complexity, where Dignitas the, uh, are leading 5-3 at the moment. Still, very early days for all the game. Oh! Okay. How did that not hit? I really thought it would have connected. The timing of that device. But Sunny, once again, opening up towards Ivy. I do believe the second or third time has got an opening pick here. But immediately, Astralis. They switch up their positions as Dupree completely blinded, still finds Sergei looking for more, does quite a bit of damage in the aerial, but he will fall. So man advantage still in place, I say that, the great price back with a quick double of his own, almost gets a third, and Device chimes in, and all of a sudden, again, it is a 1v2, <gasps> Device, he jumps at Alu, misses the shot. Yeah, that was, that was awkward, <laughs> Device does get the kill what? though, Alu not making it happen, oh, I, I really thought Device had got the kill there on towards Sergei. When he goes to that shot, I'm just waiting for death, but luckily, Sergei evades it. Still the round goes in favor of Astralis, though, so it's not really uh, much to write home about, but Ents, unfortunately, not getting anything done in that round. They're going to be purchasing up a couple of pistols, utility across the board, Kevlar in, but they have to start winning rounds at this point. It's not enough to do damage. It's not enough to get half buys and save for the next. They just need round wins, and unfortunately, they haven't got many of those. Indeed, they don't. A very quick, uh... Oh, hold on, hold on. Device gonna be farming a few frags here. There we go. Off easy pickings for a device and a disc. At the distance. A quick, uh, stats update for you guys. Almost a flawless round, just losing to Free. Uh, who's been having a comparatively quiet game, but honestly, he has, really hasn't had much to do. Um, device and Majisk are right now in 13 rounds and an ADR of 103 for Device and 109 for Majisk. That is just immense. And uh, utility damage of 383 for Zipix. Even though he has really, you know, hasn't really had a big game that Device Majisk uh, and Glaive have had so far, he's also been chiming in in his own very way with the utility. So it's just looking like a very, very, very solid CD side here from Astralis. And for Ents, man, they sporadically they've had a few Ooh. rounds here and there, but three rounds might not be enough. I say that though, with Alwyn Aerial, they strike in tandem. Device with a reply. So that's a good start. Alu getting that opening kill gives Ents the advantage. And also with Ariel's kill, keeps them afloat. Now Sergei with a good headshot. If Ents can manage to scrap together these last few rounds, 10-5, certainly recoverable scoreline. And Device was kept busy. X7's time to strike from behind. He does that effectively. It's now under Zipex. Master of the clutch. Can he pull it off here in a 1v3? And around the left side, it's Alu who hits the deck. And X7 will take him down. It's going to be a fourth round on the board for Ents. And much more impressive for them in that round. Early success from Alu starting things off. And now they need their fifth. They need to get this fifth round on the board to, to make this map competitive. The Astralis have done a lot, reaching double figures already. The money is so well built up, the Danes will be able to buy again. So ends. it's all on this. Let's see if they can get a fifth round at the half. Neither this. Five rounds even then, it's going to be... It's still going to be hard. Uh, a tall ask. This Astralis, the terrifying thing about this team is just their map pool. It is ridiculous. It is just insane how deep a map pool they have. But here they come charging on Glaive. They're pushing up. He's pushed in pretty deep, oh. but he's going to be caught up by Sergei. And Alu's going to chime in with one of his own as well. Dupree alive, barely on 3 HP, internally hemorrhaging. And it's all on Zipex, the clutch minister himself. 1v4, but this might be too much to ask of the man. Yeah, that was just really good stuff from Ensign in these last two rounds. Just effectively taking those early duels, winning them, and... Stopping that A defense from doing anything. And so Zipex has been left alone in unrecoverable positions. Two rounds in a row. So Ents fight back. They get themselves the last two. 10-5 at the half. It's time for a short break. But we'll see if Ents can do a little bit more. While Astralis get off to the strong lead on the T side. Join us then.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to ESL1 Road to Rio. It's Australis versus N. Second half live of map number one. It's Ariel off to the fastest of starts. Two oh. kills picked up. The 5 7 lighting them up. But it's Dupree taking one back in. Still the advantage side defense. They don't seem a little non committal right now after losing a couple of players early on. Glaive's got a Molotov. And I do believe he wants to use that for late in the. Uh, in the round, wants to get the bomb down. Trade does come in. Majisk finding so okay, okay. Majisk. All right, that's a tap and a half. Finds two, two v two now. Glaive has got a flashbang to kind of make his escape from the site. He will manage to do so now. Can he make his way towards Brown Holds? Is the question. He's going to run up. He's got the Molotov as well. They do have the smoke in the hands of X7. There are two flashes and the nade as well. Oh, X7. Could be. Oh, it's gonna be the nade from Alu that takes the kill. Magic's dunked and he's out of there. All onto Glaive now. Molotov in hand. Smoke onto the bomb though, so that gets rid of the Molotov. And what's ineffective, Beautiful. and Alu just waits patiently for the peak. Glaive goes down and Entz will win the pistol. It's a desperately needed one as well. They needed that one on the board, and well, they get their sixth round. And it's also, that's the reason why you want to have the extra utility on uh, on train. It doesn't matter if it's the T side or CD side, because always it's a Molotov. We even saw a really cool setup. Uh, I forgot who it was with CIS matchup, where we had the double nade uh, setup for the post plant, which actually I prefer, because that means even if the CDs have a smoke, it's from Ariel with the 5 7 getting those two kills. But with the bomb down, Astralis will be going for a buy. Two AKs, Galil, Majisk. Taking one for the team alongside Zepex, just the deagles for the two of them. They have dropped the two AK-47s on the device and Glaive. Quite a bit of utility to work with as well. For Enz though, MP9, three M4s and a FAMAS. They have decided to really invest into the uh, into the rifles instead of really going for a lot of utility, which is uh, just a little surprising. Well, three players positioned over towards Ivy early from Astralis. Device is going to smoke off the left side and Molly out the right. Just a methodical take, limiting the positions of the CT side, and Astralis can just take Ivy control. Ends are playing it a little bit more passively anyway. X7 boosted up, well, standing on top of the green train, is looking down towards the Ivy area. And the FAMAS in his hands, just waiting for the peak around the corner. Astralis looked to split the A bomb site. Three through Ivy, two through Tcon. Be a big hit coming in from Astralis with 40 seconds left on the clock. They are really oh. close, Sunny. Peeking in, perfect timing. He finds Zepex. The trade doesn't come in. Glaive needs to find this kill, but the smoke still keeping him at bay. Meanwhile, Ariel spots out the player that is device. He's gonna drop, and one by one, they're just falling apart here, Denko. I think he just might go for the save at this point. Oh, they're going to go for the full commit. They're going for it. 15 seconds. They're just going to make contact. Takes a bit of damage. Arrow's going to get the drop on him. It's all on Glaive. 1v4. And he's going to be found out and put out of his misery by Sergei. Coming in from Pop Dog. Yeah, 10 to 7. Hence, string a couple together to survive the force by from Astralis. And it should be an eco for the Danes now. Well, Ents, you know, they had to get off to a good start here on the CT side. They had to get that momentum going. And well, they've managed to do so. Got the 2 m 4 a s in play, straight away on Alu and Ariel. Astralis just going to be uh, on the eco, the eagle in play on a few of them, but Ents should be on an 8th round. This is what you want to see, you know, this is where Ents have to do most of the damage, this is where they have to do the heavy lifting in the series. Because when we look over all of the series, the maps in play are looking pretty scary if you're Ents. Next is Nuke, then Inferno, so... They have to win train here if they want a chance in the series. I think they have to try and pick this up. But well, Alu, that is clean. Nice headshots coming in towards the A bomb start early on. Just playing from connector, tapping away as Astralis trying to emerge from Tcon. Well, a two man advantage in play for Ents. I like the, the anti eco setup they have here. Yeah, the, you have Surrey so playing up close with the M4 towards B, but look at the way that the CDs are playing towards Alu. They have three players there, and you they also sent up Sunny early on towards uh towards ivy to ensure there's no flank coming in so they can use the distance of the rifles great work from them alu picking himself with a triple kill a flawless round for ends and they need a few more rounds like that they're slowly but surely inching closer to the scroll line of ends so off the stralis i'm sorry as we do see the buy coming out for the danes once more ak's all around device perhaps debating whether he goes for the awp if he does he won't have any kevlar and he's going to be going for it dinko it is going to be the glass cannon he is naked but he has a big stick to work with Oh, 
spot. Sergey. And a bit of an aggressive hunt with Sunny. They want to peek towards upper together, but the utility from Astralis is going to hold them at bay for the meantime. Astralis have three players positioned towards Ivy early again. Just a standard default coming in from the Danes. And the way that Astralis play the T side, you know, they don't put too much pressure on towards Ents early on towards Yard. So they can just take control. They can play close. They can get in towards Pop Dog, get behind the E box. Ents luckily are allowed to play their setup, but whichever way they like here on the CT side. So Astralis are affording them that luxury. But Astralis are just putting the, police, uh, the pieces in place. And eventually we'll be uh, ready to go. Just leaving one player off towards Ivy. That's going to be Magisk. Just hoping, holding for uh, for Ents coming that way. 55 seconds now. Look at the position Sunny's assumed. Zipex around the corner. This MP9. Oh, Zipex was not ready for it. And Sunny's going to get the opening kill for Ents. He's still sticking around. That is massive. The fact that he has that control of brown halls means though all the four players of ends can now concentrate on the A bomb site. Timing not going to work out for X7. He peers around the corner. The smoke has already dissipated, and Majisk is pushed on through. And that's going to allow. It's going to open up the map at least out of bomb site. The rest of his teammates to come in. Sergey trapped in the bombs train. And Sonny's still floating around. He's just everywhere right now, Dinkum. But just won't be expecting this. And he's going to walk straight into his open arms. Picks up a second kill for himself. Upgrade. Sonny, what is going on? Ariel just pushes up. And Device is going to find him. The inner bombs are going to compromise. Sonny, all that remains on the defense towards his B oh, bomb side. Glyph, that's the bomb. Whoa. Just swinging into the open with the last out? two seconds left. Glyph swings into the open. Gets shut down. And the round <laughs> falls through his fingers. What? Oh, that is just questionable. Molotov is on the side, so I'm not sure if that's stopping him from standing on default, but he swings to try and take the fight and unfortunately gets stopped in his track. So Ents will be taking that round happily, just adding that to the collection. And now it's 10 to 9. That is so surprising from Glaive. Like someone, like of all the people in professional Counter-Strike, one person you don't really call out that often for making mistakes like that would be Glaive, right? That's so surprising. I, I probably agree with you. Maybe the Molotov had prevent, prevent, pushed him out. But it didn't look like it. It felt like the flames were actually a little short of his position. And it goes to the peak. It was five seconds remaining. If he dies, that's it. The round is done. So very surprising from Astralis. And that's uh, ends. Now one round shy, Dinko, of tying things up with, uh, with Astralis. And they're slowly but surely starting to build up the economy as well. 7k and Sunny. 1500 and Ariel. Alu, a little low. So it's X7. But if they do manage to string a couple of rounds together here while not losing too many players... They're going to be they're going to be looking good here to take this map, which is of course their map pick. And bear in mind, this is a must-win map for Ents. It is. It can be a little confusing around Robin system. So the one thing I know is if Ents wins this, Fnatic are out. If Fnatic wins and Ents loses, then Fnatic are in, which is it's kind of wild. Yeah, and that's why all of the games are currently being played simultaneously as well. So it it. it... It puts the tension and the anticipation up massively if you're tuning in and really trying to focus on the groups and see which way the standings are going to be shifting. So make sure you keep an eye on all of the other streams as well. It's going to be Glyph catching out Sunny, taking him down. I'll be looking for a little bit more. Dupree, 14 HP left. It's going to be an easy kill for him. But Ariel will take down Magisk. And now we're back into a 4v3. Yes, an advance he saw him with Astralis, but ends with keeping it within touching distance. Device leaning from T-Con. Smoke off. The connector, Flash coming in after it as well. And now, Astralis starting to pressure in towards the A site. Device gets the right read, checks at the right time, and catches Alu, picks him off now. Ariel with a lot to do, and he's going to get a double. A huge play from Ariel inside of the site. He drops the bomb, but it's not enough just yet. A 1v1. Device versus Sergey. He has the iron goal. Device is going to come back off and wrap around the brown train. He has no idea where Sergey is. He can't get the reach just yet. And Sergey repositions. Oh. Low HP, but he still makes it happen. And Ents will tie up the scoreline 10 to 10. Sergey winning the 1v1 against Device. The shift cojones of the guy. He was he was he was bleeding out. It was so very low. And new device was somewhere around the vicinity. And he goes for the fight. That's what catches him off uh, device off guard. Instead of just holding towards the bomb train and waiting for device to go on the hunt, he took the fight to device. What a clutch from Sergey. That was massive. That was very very crucial. Because once more Astralis are now back to echoing days. They have the Deagles. They have a little bit of some utility, a couple of smokes, a nade, and uh, some Kevlar to work with. But ends. The comeback train continues. Well, 
This is not the kind of round Australis will be wanting to go into. I mean, they look like they've done plenty in their CT half, but clearly not. Ants have been indomitable in these last few rounds now. X7 looking to try and swing. He'll be catching device and taking him down. Looking for a little bit more. to free picked off as well. X7 chiming them together. And now Glaive and Zipex left alive. 2v5 overall. A minute left on the clock. And the bomb safely in the possession of the Ants players. Zipex will try and make an extension from the B-bomb side. Glaive as well spotted by Sergei. And this is just a beautiful haul from Sergei now. Zipex, the last remaining player. The eagle in his hand and inside the smoke, Sergei stands. Zipex is looking for his best, but it's the spam, the spray, and Ariel with the kill. 11 to 10. Ends haven't lost a round since the last few rounds of the first half. So this has just been unstoppable from the Finns. Astralis have to put a stop to it here. They've got the buy coming in. It's going to be the AK. It's going to be the AWP, but they have to turn it into round wins. They have to indeed. And like you mentioned, Ends six in a row on the CD side. Eight in a row overall. They did win the last two rounds on the T side. And now, they suddenly, they are looking very solid indeed. And the money as well. An average of 6k on three players. Sergey on 5k as well. Money looking good in the lead as well. This is this is massive. Very, very massive, Dinko. Yep. When we take a look at... Uh... Astralis now going to be heading their way out and towards T-Con. It's going to be Dupree, the first victim of Ariel, who really has gone under the radar. He's just been un incredible on this A-bomb side. Just kill after kill, doing so much damage. And well, Magisk is going to catch X7 burning in the Molotov, though. X7 from the grave claims his refrag. And now it's starting to look good for Entz, the man advantage in play. Alu turns and catches Glaive coming around the back lines. And now it's Device and Zipex left into a 2v4. A minute and five seconds left, and Astralis yet again, they crumble. They just can't get over this Finnish wall. I don't really hear much about Finnish walls, but yeah, I do agree this is it. Alu just comes running out like a madman, not expecting Zipex to be that very close. But of course, here's Alu rampaging out towards Ivy. 45 seconds. There's still some time to work with Astralis, but my word, 10-3 for Astralis earlier on, and now 11 to 10 for Ends. They have come back and they've taken the lead, and they're just two away from making this work. And it looks like Astralis might. Are they going to go for the save here? No, they're going to keep pushing ahead. Time and not their friend. And the problem is they also have Ariel is pushed up to his pop dog, and then Maul. That's it. Round's done. Round's done. Perfectly time Molotov. 13 seconds. Oh, it's got to be okay. huge. It's got to be absolutely oh, no way. explosion no way. of kills coming in from Astralis. No and way. just like that, Ariel peeks into the open. And well, Blair, you scudded it. Caster's curse right there. Last few seconds left. All the ends players just line up in the crosshairs <laughs> of Astralis. And a flurry of three kills coming in. 11-11. Astralis tie things up. And well, Ents, when you take a look at what they've got on the table, it's still looking good in terms of their buy, but that is absolutely heartbreaking. That kind of round definitely was looking good for Ents. All the time was on their side. Astralis had to make an absolute Hail Mary play in from Ivy, and well, they make it work. That is insane. I, I'm, I'm speechless. That round was gone. The Molotov have tossed in. 15 seconds left. 3v2. You don't know where any of the CTs are. And somehow, they face all the three players from, from Ents. A little questionable as to why the... The, the second player really had to fa face there. He just had to just stay alive, try to prevent the bomb from getting planted, but take nothing away from Astralis. That was a round they should never have won, and somehow they bring it back. The Danes showing that they cannot ever be counted out. What an incredible round. What an incredible round. And now, Ents though, once more getting the opening kick. The <laughs> kill. My bad, but Majisk spots out a barrel. He's going for the hunt, finds X7. It's going to neutralize the man advantage. Well, Alu, already on the back lines, will catch Dupree from the CT stairs. An easy kill coming in as Dupree hits the deck. And now a man advantage in play for Ents. But look at the flank. Magisk completely unavailed. Takes himself one. Alu and Sergei coming in with a double. And it's all under device. A one versus three. 40 seconds in play. And well, the angle is held by Sergei as he taps away on the AUG. Taking down device 12 to 11. Ents into the lead again. And while Astralis is back to the low buy, they haven't really got too much to work with here. This is looking good for Ents. Not so much Astralis. Indeed, 12 to 10. And yes, despite that one round with Astralis, I still, I'm still trying to wrap my heads around as to how they won it. 
But keeping that aside, it ends up look so good on the CT side. Mac 10 out for X7. It's a, it's a pretty good read. They have an understanding. This trials probably will just make it with the pistols. Looking at the money, uh, I expect to see a, a little bit of an investment. They can kind of equalize out the money a little bit. While Dupree and Device are in 2900, you have Glaive in four to five thousand dollars. Zipex in 40 feet, 45, 50. So they could just go for a light bar here. Majisk AK, Kevlar, Dupree Tech 9, Kevlar. So yeah, they're going to keep still like an average of $1,400 in the bank. And then the, a little bit of an investment coming in from the majority of the players here. So let's see what happens. Still make it work. One thing is Trials of Tata's. No matter how bad it is, how rough it looks, how unlikely it looks, they can always bring it back. And still looking very solid at Denko. They've lost just one round in the second half. They have money in the bank. They definitely have the weaponry as well to work with. Aggression towards Ivy Bank 7. And won't be looking to take this fight, especially because Device has got the Deagle to work with. In that range, it could be a problem. Answer in complete control right now. This is uh, this is looking good for them across the board. They're just going for the passive setup. They're not giving anything up. They, they the only aggressive stance, the only advanced stance, was over towards Ivy early on. But even then, they've pulled that back, it's holding back, not giving Astralis anything. No one playing towards Pop Dog this round. It's very much wait on the rifles and the pistols to come towards you. And while the AWP is ready, it's Alu taking down Dupree. Sunny in with a kill as well. It's Magic picked off. Two-man advantage in play for Entz, just under a minute left. Device is creeping up through all off. He has got that AK. Glaive tosses the smoke out in front of him, but look at that, Sonny! That really helps him out there. He can turn back and catch off Device. Glaive also falling. And that's all in Zipex, looking to sprint in towards B, looking for the bomb plant. There is one player waiting on him over here, and that's Sergey, but... Zipex is actually coming in through upper, and that's where Sergey will hold his crosshair. Another kill picked up, 13 to 11. Entz will be now three away from victory. And Astralis, well, they had a good first half, but this second has been absolutely awful. They haven't done anything. They have looked completely uninspiring on this T side. And well, they've got to try and change that. They've got the buy coming back in, but even then, they haven't been able to make it happen. The only round they've actually won here is Entz making a huge error. Yeah, indeed. Apart from that, it's been so convincing, hasn't it? Previous round again, Entz keeping five alive. That means the money. Still very, very solid indeed. They're in no danger of getting reset. This is pretty much every win condition almost met for Ents. Aerial. Aggression, aggressing out. And this is brilliant, but X7 gets blinded. I do believe that was his own teammate's flashbang, and he survives on 4 HP. Meanwhile, Aerial, here's the play taking place towards Zinna. Oh. And what? Okay, <laughs> mid-air headshot by Zemix. Reasonable, of course, but Alu strikes back. Two quick kills. He knows the bomb is going to be planted. X7 finds device. Aerial with the flank early on. Dupree is going to fall. And Majisk is too far away to get anything done. And the round is over. Sonny flanking the go. flanker. And he's going to execute him. Gangland style from behind. 14 to 11. Ents look absolutely indomitable at the moment, Dinko. This is just incredible. Yeah, now Ents 2 away from victory. Astralis just try to change it up. They've gone for so many different setups. Passive defaults into executes on the A-bomb site. That hasn't worked. They've gone for lit pushes through Ivy. That one time it works is because Ents messed up and Ariel peeked out from Pop Dog at the wrong time. And now we're seeing a 14-11 and we're only two away from victory for Ents. Astralis, <laughs> you know it's starting to get desperate when they're going for the B-rush attempt. And it didn't even work either, so... Really starting to struggle now here. I think they started to struggle a long time ago. But now Ents looking to try and t take Train. And it's good to see them come back to some sort of form here on this map. I think Train is certainly a map that used to be one of the best teams in the world on. Oh yeah, 100%. No arguments whatsoever. And what I love about Ents has been the fact that on this comeback Train with CD side, it hasn't been them playing passively and going for retakes and being reactive. They're forcing Astralis out of the comfort zone. They're making the plays. They're winning these, getting these multi-kills and just such a good setup and such good reads. The device, perfect little crosser placement, finds X7. Find an opening going the way, but Sunny immediately strikes back, finds the priest, looking for more though, but Majisk is there to reply back. Ariel still floating around, but Majisk opens it up. And all of a sudden, there's no one else on the A-bombs that Sergei is going to be found out. And that's a call for, well, Alucard, I don't think he can even save his trap now with the AWP scope in. They hear him out, and Device will fall. But Alu, what can he possibly do, Dinko? It's a 1v3. 
Well, Alu moving forward. Madzis takes him away. Alu picked up, and it's another round. Finally being picked up by Astralis. Madzis with a 3k, the impact player of round 26. 274 damage done. And we'll be moving into this next one with Astralis needing to turn this into consistent success. They cannot afford to win that round and then just go right back to their old ways here in the second half. It has to be consistent. Ents have no money issues. They've got another buy coming in. Even in this round, they've got some reserve cash left over on pretty much every player. So Ents, to win this one, Astralis are going to be facing another economic deficit. And we'll be seeing a very scary scoreline ensue. The map point for Ents, looking to try and take it over the line. So Astralis, it's do or die time. It is indeed. Just two rounds separating them. And bear in mind, if they can, Dinko, somehow string two together, they're going to break Ents' economy. And then scores are going to be tied, and Ents are going to be in quite a conundrum indeed. But for now, though, still too early to call it. Ents definitely looking solid. They've lost only two rounds so far in what has been a momentous comeback on the CT side. Jisk. So very good at opening up this bomb size. But Jisk has been a player to watch for, uh, for Astralis, starting off with those... Heroics of his with the scout early on this map. And then the previous round, the prior round, where he got 3k huge kills to get the, only the second round for Astralis on the T side. You see uh, Zerex trying to trying to put up a ruse here towards the inner bomb site. He's trying to draw the rotation, but they're not gonna have any of it. Ends three players just stuck towards the A bomb site. Out of yard, Molotov gonna be coming in and device opens it up. X7 with a quick trade. Zephex coming in quickly. He could actually catch a player. Oh. He spots on Ariel's head and he's gonna tap him away. Molotov's gonna still keep him at bay, but he's done his job. All on X7 to hold on here. He finds Dupree, but it's now a 3v3. 3v3 indeed. 17 seconds though. Alu through the back lines. He's gonna be trying to pick them off, and that's a nice shot. That's the bomb on the floor. There's a big kill, but X7 now alone in the world. He'll nearly pull it off, but Glib wins the 1v1 battle, and Astralis get a crucial round on the board. Oh my god, that is close. A hairline coming through, and X7 nearly makes it happen in the chaos. But it's gonna be Astralis 13 to 14, and still in the lead. But the money problems are starting to come through. Their economy's finally breaking down. And Astralis, this might... This is the final hurdle. You know, if they win this one, then Ence's money is gone. They've gone for the decision to, to purchase up on Alu, get the open play, but the rest go to the upgraded pistols. I would have completely understood if they'd go... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's the only investment they had. X7 can retrieve the AWP. And now they know where the AWP is. But apart from that, the rest of them... The pistols? Aerial... Oh, almost gets a kill. Zepex survives. But a skin of his teeth. One HP. Off. Picked up. But device ready and waiting. And one by one, they're falling here. The good thing for Ents, though, Dinko, is the fact that the four of them at least went for the... Uh, they at least went for kind of like the, the, the very light investment. So they have the money to work with. Sunny picking up the AWP. As long as he saves this, it's still going to be a good buy for Ents. Going to the next round. But Astralis, this is a golden opportunity for them to... Kind of come back into this game. It's going to be 14 14 unless Sunny pulls off something truly, truly miraculous. I don't think that's going to be happening. I don't think that's a real possibility. 43 seconds. Astral is going to be running over to the B-bomb site. You've got Zipex who's just cleared it all out. He's even going further to go in towards CT spawn. So, this is big from Astralis. They'll even the scoreline out 14-14. And like you said, you, you preface this half with, oh, it can look awful. You know, Astralis can be doing nothing for round after round after round. But then, they can just show up. And, and it almost feels like they just hit a switch. And they're right back into things. Sunny counter Zipex, but... This economic decision, if they save the AWP into the next round, they're going to evade the problems that could have occurred. You know, with that investment on Alu, you're, you're looking at no op into the next round. But if Sunny can save that over, which is looking like a real possibility if Glyph doesn't spot them running towards Ivy. He does spot Sergei and takes him away. Now Sunny really has to stay alive inside of Ivy. His device running close towards him. Op v op in a second here around the corner. Oh my god, Sunny is just staying alive. He lets the run pass. There's the one kill. And well, a second as well from Sunny. Coming through. Dupree and Device both hitting the deck. And well, 14 to 14. They'll carry it on over into the next round.
The fact that he stays alive and picks up a double, that is just massive from Sunny. I, I don't even know how he managed to survive that and save the AWP. And that means, despite the fact that Alu had gone for that force buy, his AWP will still be retained. And now the buy comes in for Enz. This is the actual do or die moment, Tinko. This is a true do or die moment for Enz. The bank is empty. They have no more money. This buy is, it is what they'll have to work with to somehow get to map point. And they desperately, oh, so desperately need this map. Well, Device holding for the aggression towards B upper. Vent swing around the corner, which doesn't really look like a real possibility, having the solo player over towards B, and that's going to be Sergei who's been tasked with that, as has been the case for the majority of the second half. Alu scoped in towards T-Con. It's going to be too free. There's the flash, but it doesn't matter. Alu still takes the kill, opens things up. And they have lost Dupree, but Glaive trying to make a play on his own. He's going to fall as well. And now Astralis, they've got a 3v1 on the B-bomb site up against Sergei. But this rotation is going to come in very, very quickly from Entz. And Astralis haven't capitalized on their opportunity. This is not looking good for the Dance whatsoever. The smoke has held them off. And well, eventually they've got to go. And Magic just dives in. Does drop Sergei pretty quickly. But now the rotation can come through. Sergei's close in the smoke. Zipex about to fall. That's the bomb. But look at the damage. No kills yet. But still, Magic up on top. A risky position. But it's working out until he pulls the nade. And that's when Sunny decides to take his prey. Astralis will get the bomb planted. But it's still a 2v4. A nice kill from Sunny. And it's all on Device. A 1v4 locked in towards heaven. This round is just unwinnable for Device. He's alone with... Two flash buying. There's no Molotov for him to work with. There's no nades to get him out of there. And while Entz can just defuse, the rest can cover, and Astralis will have to concede map point. Entz, 15 14, huge plays from Sunny, a great double. I felt like Device, he might have had a tiny little tiny little chance to make that work with. If he got an opening kill and he'd held on to the Molotov for a while more, obviously there was no way he could know that there were no smokes on the side of Enz, so he preemptively used it early on, but uh, there was a lot of time for Enz to work with, and uh, they win perhaps the most important round in this game so far. And of course, they have to buy Astralis as well. Not too shabby a buy. Three AKs, Galil, and of course, device with the AWP, 15 to 14 Enz. One more round. One more round to take a lead in this three mapper. Or, well, what could potentially be a three mapper. We still don't know how Nuke is going to play on out. And Alu. Ooh. Oh, that's lovely. That is lovely. I do believe that the first time he's gone for that particular boost this time. And it's going to be Device going to get caught up. And Dupree replies back. And barely stays oh, okay. alive. Oh, the nade and the Molotov double wombo combo. And here's the play towards Inner. Going in real quickly. Zipex going to find Sergei. Makes it a 3v3. Molotov deployed. And for pick sorry, bomb picked up. Majisk is making a lot of noise. And that is information gleaned by Sunny. Well, X7 over towards CT spawn. Zipex around the corner. Glaive just holding for Sunny coming around the back lines. And Glaive is just waiting around the corner here. Easy kill for Glaive. Sunny nearly has a chance there, but Glaive will pick it up. And while this is looking like overtime, play, this is certainly looking like overtime on the cards. It's all on Alu. Coming back in with the AWP. And Zipex will confirm right through the smoke. The spray will Ooh. come through. And well... Back to EU today, Blair. We've got ourselves an incredible match. Overtime already. Astralis versus Entz. Going the distance and a little bit more. What a map it's been. What an absolutely blinder of a game. And for a moment there, it, I just felt like Entz had, had it in the bag. They had mounted the comeback. Somehow managing to just put up this almost an indomitable CT side, but... Astralis just finding some, some fighting themselves at the very end. Glaive, he wants control of this pop dog. He's taking a bit of damage, but he manages to toss in a Molotov. The timing on that X7, so much damage being dealt out onto Majisk and Zipex. And a bomb isn't spotted towards Ivy as well. And that's going to keep the four players, the four series towards outer. Just have one towards inner, that's Sergei with the, uh, with the AWG. As Sonny he finds the first kill. So much damage done already in this round. It's virtually just begun as well. And well, Device taking a little bit of chip damage. It's not going to be too much to write home about just yet. Under a minute. Well, Alu has just caught off Magisk in towards T-Con. Delivering a deadly blow as Glaive does move through on his own. I feel like Glaive has been making a lot of these plays just solo. Zipex not ready for it, not going in together with him. And
And now he has to cross into the side, but Sunny is ready and waiting. He's just going to walk around. As soon as he hears this plan, denies it as well from happening. And will Ents are going to go up to 16 rounds on the board. Device, 1v5 on the other end of the map, saving the AWP. We'll preface with this overtime with the fact that it is 10k. We're playing in a Valve event, so we have to play by that rule set. And it's overtime 10k, unfortunately. Oh, nice shot from Device. Obviously, just saving this is the call, but X7's not even going to let that happen. Takes him down 16-15, ends back into lead, winning the first round of overtime. Oh, for those of you who probably are new to competitive Counter-Strike, wondering how overtime plays out, if the first team to get to 19 rounds, or rather the first team to win four rounds in an overtime will be the winner. In this case, it's going to be three rounds on the CD side, then we have a switch over and three more rounds on the T side for both the teams. Rents. One round done, three more to find. And well, you can already see the potential money problems arising here for Astralis. Look at that reserve cash. If they lose this round convincingly again, well, we're looking down the uh, the barrel of an eco, or a, well, obviously not the full eco, but a very limited buy from Astralis into the last round. So, Ents in a position now where they are certainly looking like the team in control if they pick this one up. And we'll alu. Here with the AWP, Ariel got himself into his pop dog. He's been really, really solid throughout the CT half. Oh, I love the aggression from X7. He will manage one, but Magisk from the grave, burning him to a crisp. Sergey coming back in with the kill on Sipex. And now we've got ourselves a 4v3. A man advantage for Ents to play with. And just over a minute left for Astralis. You can see they're trying to figure out what they want to do. But at this point, no matter where they go, they're going to be unfavored. And this... And this particular setup from Ants, this is looking very good. Aerial towards Pop Dog. He won't hear anything, but the flag is going to be real quick once it does come in. Sergey with the AUG, just holding the line. We have Sunny as well, playing towards Spool. That incendiary is going to delay them for a few more seconds. Now they have about 30 seconds to make the play. So a decent amount of time. Three Molotovs, two smokes, and three flash, four flash marks. There's a lot of utility to work with for Astralis. They wish to do so. Double drop down comes in. Device crosshair is trained. In fact, it's gonna be Dupree who gets the kill. Dupree alone opens it up to two CDs waiting. And all of a sudden, Dinko, in a 4v3, it's turned right on its head. Well, Astralis have fought their way into the round. Now they go back towards Alper as Dupree looking to round the corner. Ariel is up there, making his way through the ladder, and well, he's stopped by Dupree. And now it's Alu left alone, a 1v3 clutch, a retake alone with the AWP. It's not going to be easy whatsoever. He will pick off Glaive. And now Device just tosses the Molotov on towards the bomb. And just lets it tick on over. It's going to be Astralis with 16 on the board. And so we tie ourselves up again. This is uh, the game that keeps on giving so far. And no signs of stopping either. Big round from Dupree in this one. Relatively quiet by his own right. He does die there at the end of the round as well, but relatively quiet overall in the series uh, so far. But 15 25, the big impact round there. And it, it, it's when it matters when you hit the frags. Magisk and Device leading the way. 26 kills for Device. Magisk on 24. Over on Ents, the leading players are Ariel, Alu, everyone pretty much, basically, here are sitting just above 20 kills apart from X7. So Ariel, Alu, and Sunny. 25 and 24 kills between them. My word, Dupree though, that round was all Dupree. He might be bottom fragging for his team, not by much to be very honest, but those three, the first two kills, like just opening up that bomb site when they were, they were ready okay, and waiting. Sergei. Massive play. Sergey not expecting that from Zipex. I like he's that. gonna do the smart thing. I, I love it, absolutely. Brilliant start from him. And he's gonna single handedly try and do something here. He tosses in a smoke, but it's not really drawing on the rotation from the remaining members' events. Three players still holding towards A. And bear in mind, this is the first. This is the final round of the first half of overtime. So there's no point in saving, but they are going to go for the full gamble. This is ballsy. This is very ballsy for men's, and it actually might work on out. Aerial's going to find one. Trade comes in. Still two more players. In fact, three more players holding and lying in wait. Wow, Sunny. Just dropping off the top of the train. It's going to be X7 back in Ivy. Looking for the long-range fights. But meantime, it's going to be Alu taking down Device. 
3v3, X7 from range, catches that magic skin. This is starting to crumble for Astralis. They're going to go be going back in towards the B bomb site as fast as they can. Glaive has cleared it and got in towards CT spawn. Now, he could be the linchpin. He could be the player to make this happen. He's close towards CT, and that's exactly where X7 and Sunny are both re-approaching from. Glaive tosses the Molotov in towards Connector and gets the hell out of Dodge. He does not want to take those fights in towards CT any longer. Now, it's all about playing the post plant. And while Sunny has oh just got God. the perfect timing to come back in from CT spawn. He'll be creeping up on the oil train, and they're not really looking this way. Zipix eventually will start to check multiple different angles, but Sunny is just walking up. The timing is everything, and while Sunny gives away his position, Zipix spotting him, and now Glaive, the sandwich is there between them, and they've worked this one so well. They've played this one to perfection, and now Alu, 1v2, the time's ticking. He does damage with the nade, but it's just perfectly played from Glaive and Zipix. It's 17-16, and Estralis will lead the way going into the second half of overtime number one. That was so well played by Astralis. That's just so well played. They knew that they had no idea where the CDs were. Then you had Glaive just walking all the way towards the B bomb site, finds it empty, and then of course they manage to clutch it out. Beautiful teamwork as well in that 2v3. And somehow, I don't know, ends were looking so good initially in the beginning of that overtime, but Astralis, they're now in the lead, and they're now on the CT side of Train Dinko. Yeah, that was a really, really big play. That was all Glaive, really, just making that play in towards the B-bomb side, recovering the control for them. Working with Zipex to get the round done. Now, Astralis leading the way. Just a few more needed for them. And so Sean Good, fortitude to come back into the game overall, and you have to remember, Astralis are leading the way, 10 rounds coming in from the first half, but it was the end show for a while. We're now into overtime, good damage done. Device hitting the shot, but it's not the kill just yet, but that Whoa. certainly is, that's a flick and a half. Vertically attaching himself to Ariel, who takes him down, and while Zipex with the Molotov burns away Sergei. Man advantage for Astralis coming back into this B-bomb site retake. X7 stuck on the site, 25 HP. Smokes up, Molotov's going in behind it, and Astralis are just taking their time. Sweet, sweet time coming back into this bomb site. They know they've got the time to play with, and they have to try and flush them out of their positions. Molotov still available for Magus. Smoke and a flash as well. The Zipex pushes through the smoke, catches X7, and suddenly the kills come in for Astralis. It's map point here on Trin. They fought their way into this position, Blur, and now they just need one more. We just need one more. What a clinical retake from Astralis as well. That was so well done. They let the bomb get planted. That's fine. They hold the line. They use the utility. They burn Sergei alive. And uh, I think it's X7 who got the bomb down. Even he was trapped there. And they knew. The second he saw the bomb get planted, they knew there was another player towards a bomb train. Just beautifully done retake. And for Ents, man, this this is uh, a little bit of a heartbreak for them. What a comeback it was on the CT side. Incredible showing on the CT side. But then Astralis, a last gasp from them at the end of, the, uh, of regulation. And now... The tables have turned, Dinko. Need one more round for Astralis to take map one, which is Ensis pick in a series, which is a must win for the Finns. Dupree will be found out. Sergei lying in wait, waiting for the aggression from the CTs. They find one. Now they head towards the brown halls, but no one's playing towards Inner. It's only Zipex. They're playing quite far away. Sunny gets caught out. Dual off in play, and this retake might get a little icky here unless. Zipex does something truly special. He'll get nothing done. He gets found out by Zipex, and then Alu strikes. That should be the call for the save. To two ops in a 2v4, bomb done towards B. You just want to save your two AWPs, and that's going to be 17 rounds for Ents. Okay. One more remaining for them to take it overtime number two, and for Astralis, you need one to take the map. Well, we are getting into a position now that's getting very, very exciting. Will Astralis take the map, or will Ents fight back to double OT? Just one round in it now. This is where the pressure begins to mount. Astralis, they've got themselves into the position. They've fought hard to get here. It feels like they've been on the back foot for quite a bit of this, but you know, it just shows the class of the Astralis that they can still find their way into the winning position. But Ents, that's a good round from them. I think Sergei's been finding a lot of success just above Pop Dog. We've seen that in the T half. You know, they were finding. Oh, okay. Device <laughs> does get that all into the next. That's actually kind of huge because you have to remember. Double up setup, if you consistently purchase that in 10k overtime, it can certainly be an issue. But we move into last round anyway, so it doesn't matter. 18-17. Ents coming in here. It's going to be everything they could possibly want. AWP for Alu. 8k's across the board and plenty of utility. Astralis, here they go. Time to see if they can get it over the line. Or will it be Ents fighting back to double OT? 
I'm feeling tense watching this game. I can't even imagine what might be going through ends. Because they're the ones backs against the back. Against the wall, rather. As Alu, he's pushed on out towards, uh, towards Olaf. He's got the op trained and Magist should be very, very careful indeed. Tries to time the shot. And he will get tagged on 4 HP. How is he alive? And he survives Nate as well. Majisk somehow staying alive. Now Crosser trained towards the entrance. And he's got a spot on Alu. That's a brilliant re-peak. And Fortune does favor the Brave this time around. Just one more round for Astralis. Ants trying to fight back, but they've lost the early player. Sunny, this battle needs to win it. And there it is. But the trade is in from Device. Almost instantaneous that from Device. He keeps the advantage of float for Astralis. Under a minute in play for Ents. They've got a decent amount of utility, but look at that. Dupree going on a bit of a push through Tcon, trying to flank to see if there was anybody in towards Ivy. And we're completely unaware to the left side, and he does lose his head for that. Now 44 seconds. Ents give it an opportunity there from Dupree. And now they'll start making their way out on towards Tcon. Wanting to finish here on the A-bomb site. Flash up, Ariel. Trying to get his team out on towards the side, but with 30 seconds left, Ents have got to go. There's no time to waste as they start to run through. Second flash up, and now they have to run with it. The Vice is back in Ivy. This is the big issue moving forward. Indeed it is, and it's Zepex. He's there. He gets taken down. 2v2. 15 seconds. They need to get the bomb down, but they know Device is staying alive and somehow gets another kill. 3k for Device. 12 HP, but he's done his job, and it's going to be Glaive to seal the deal, and Estra 